What's up, brothers? Hope everyone's doing well out there. It's hot as hell out here, about 107 degrees. But I gotta be honest with you, I'm kinda digging it. So I figured I'll come out here and shoot the shit with you guys for a little while. And what I wanted to talk about in today's video is when you find yourself genuinely liking a woman, you know, genuinely catching feelings for a woman, a lot of times, this is gonna turn her off. And this is one of those situations that I don't think anybody wants it to be this way. Men, women, you know, nobody out there wants it to be this way. But it's just the way it is. And uh, if you don't understand this properly, you're gonna find yourself more often than not finding yourself chasing the cat and getting your heart broken. So we're gonna try to prevent that from happening. Also, I should say, you know, on the flip side of that, when you're out and about, you know, maybe you're at the club, hell, you can even be on the dating apps, wherever, and all you're looking for is a little bow chicka wow wow, well, it seems to go well for you. It's not hard to get that. Right? And a lot of times when you get that, on the flip side of that, she wants a relationship with you. All you wanted was sex. You had sex, and now she wants a relationship. But you don't want a relationship. You don't like her that way. Why is it that when you like her, you turn her off? When all you want is to get laid, she's attracted to you. <laughs> We're going to get into that in today's video. Believe it or not, there are tons of guys that experience that same problem. So you're not the only one if this happens to you. Here's what you have to understand. When you genuinely like a woman, your behaviors, your body language, the way you talk to her, hell, I would say most importantly, your facial expressions, the way you look at her, it shows that you genuinely care about her, that you like her a lot. Here's the problem. You're looking at her the same way her dad looks at her, the same way her mom looks at her, the same way her sister looks at her. You know, it's this genuine care for somebody. And it's almost platonic. Now, I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing per se, you know, there's a time and a place for that. For example, if the two of you are married and she's going through a hard time, lost a, loss of a loved one or something, it can come in handy, right? You want to be able to care about your girlfriend, your wife. But we're talking about that initial stage when you need there to be a, in a spark. You need attraction. That's not what gets the job done. See... <clears throat> she's gonna put you in that uh, category basically like you're her brother you know, sure you like her you can care about each other but it's not gonna go any further than that and if you try to push it further than that you're gonna repulse her and you're gonna push her away because she doesn't see you that way okay now <clears throat> emotions being emotional Loving somebody, caring about somebody, like I said, there's a time and a place for it, but this ain't it. And the reason why is, with the human pair bonding process, the most important, or I should say the human pair bonding experience, the most important part is the reproductive process. Okay, and the reproductive process the biology involved here between a man and a woman, it's not about liking each other. It's not about loving each other. Like I said, in the long run, there's gonna be a time and a place for that, but not at this stage. It's about that reproductive satisfaction, you know, that the hormones. It's not about emotions. It's about sex appeal. You have to understand that. This is essentially what differentiates the quote-unquote nice guys from the bad boys. The nice guys go for the emotional investment. The bad boys follow their hormones, their testosterone. They just roll with it. Now, 
I want to explain this the best way that I can and this may sound a little strange but in order for you to understand this we got to say it your mindset you know your mentality and what you project onto the woman that you're seeing when you're in an emotional state is the complete opposite from the mentality that you project on a woman when you're in the bedroom with her. Now, what do I mean by this? You know, the average person out there would probably be too insecure to walk around public naked, right? To do some weird, freaky shit in public naked. They'd be embarrassed. They'd be ashamed of it. Too insecure. And when you have an emotional investment to a woman, that's the sort of, you know, the the cocktail of emotions that roll, or the, the cocktail of hormones that roll through your body are the ones that make you, uh, give you anxiety, make you sad, make you miss somebody, you know, make, turn you into like a sad creature. But the cocktail of hormones that you have going through your body when you're in the bedroom is a cocktail of hormones that brings out your confidence to the max. You're not afraid to get naked in the bedroom with a woman. You know, it actually turns down. You know, every everything that goes through your head that causes you to be grossed out by something or turned off by something, that stuff all disappears. So, all of a sudden you're extremely confident you're not grossed out by anything and you're just doing weird freaky shit in the bedroom, right? Well, that's what comes from testosterone. You know, that's what comes from your sex hormone going crazy. And that's also where your sex appeal comes from. So it's that same drive. You know, that's why certain guys, and maybe even you on different occasions, one day you're at the club you're confident, you're cocky, you're talking to women, you end up having sex, and she actually likes you, she wants to be with you. Whereas, you like her, you're emotional, you're weak, you're turning her off. Well, in one of those situations, you're leading with that cocktail of what makes you confident, what shuts off your insecurities, what shuts off stuff that you would normally you know, maybe be a little turned off by. No, all of a sudden you're full go. You're not judging her. No, you're just coming at her like a man. You're looking at her, your body language, your behavior is coming at her like a man that's here to drop the hammer down and get the job done. You understand? This isn't something that anybody can necessarily teach you how to do. So this isn't one of those videos where we're saying this is exactly what you need to do. No, this is one of those videos that you need to understand the difference between masculine vigor, you know, alpha, sexual energy, and emotional, you know, more beta type of energy. And every man will know what I'm talking about because we all experience both sides of this. Some days you just wake up and you're thinking about, you know, family and you're thinking about things that you care about and, you know, shit like that. And there's a, there's a time and a place for that. We're wired this way on purpose. It's good to have that side. But, again, that's the nice guy side. The bad boy side is the side that wakes up ready to go. You know, he's confident. He's extremely sexual when he talks to women. Even if he's not saying anything perverted or sexual. It's his body language, it's the way he looks at her, it's the way, you know, the tone of his voice, all of it. Right, so like I said, I can't specifically tell you what to do. But you have to be able to differentiate those two sides of yourself. And, you know, when you're a single guy and you're out there dating women, lead with that other part. You know, lead with the testosterone, the masculine side. Don't lead with the emotional side. It's just the human reproductive process. 
if you're unable to signal to a woman that you're the guy that's going to drop the hammer down, then, you know, how are you going to tickle her ovaries? How are you going to make her tingle? That's how it's done. And there's a lot of people out there that prove this. Men and women, you see these podcasts and whatnot. Everyone's always talking about why do women make such bad decisions with men? It's not that they make bad decisions. It's neither good nor bad. It's just the way their reproductive system works. It wants what it wants. Okay? You're not going to be able to change it. You know, all of the, the betas in the world can combine and get together and try to figure out a way to change it. It's never going to happen. Well, unless they're on birth control, but that's a different subject. But for the most part, this is just the way it is. You know, approach a damn woman, chest out, chin up, be confident, and you don't have to say anything perverted, but the way you look at her has to be a way that makes her feel wanted, makes her tingle, and lets her know that you're the man with the hammer that's here to put it down, and he's not going to let her down. And well, that's essentially what it comes down to. They aren't attracted to the lover boy. They might be. It might be a certain time of the month when they enjoy the, the company of the lover boy. But that's not where you want to be. You don't want to be that guy that gets, you know, gets the emotional talks and a hug every now and then after she got pumped and dumped by the hammer. You want to be the hammer. suppose it's up to you to become it but hey guys I can't tell you exactly how you're gonna become that that's gonna be up to you we all got different personalities we all look different we all walk different and talk different we all got our own version of it so what's your version figure that out and use it but hey guys I guess I'm gonna go ahead and shut this one off but I hope this video was somewhat informative and that's about it for today, guys. Until next time, see ya.